Hi, we are in packet 4.3 Triangle Congruence Proofs, part of Unifork on Congruent Triangles. So let's go through this together. Key questions. How can I prove two triangles congruent using AAS, ASA, and HL theorems? So in the previous packet, we used two theorems, the SSS and the SAS. We're going to expand on that with three new theorems, okay? And our purpose is to prove that two triangles are indeed congruent, okay? So they're identical. How do I use CPCTC? Congruent parts of corresponding triangles are congruent. I'm sorry, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. How do I use that when completing proofs? So we're going to get into that as well. Okay, so let's flip over to the first page where we have work. So these are two summary pages that I provide for you. Let's go to the first page over here. And we're going to start with the first of the three theorems that we're introducing here, the ASA theorem. It says if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and one included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So let's see what that means. If you look at the diagram over here, you see that I have two triangles, and I can see that angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B congruent to angle E, and this side AB is congruent to side DE. Angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So if angle A is congruent to angle D. And let's look at a side, side AB. So side AB is congruent to side DE, right? And then another angle, angle B is congruent to angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle E. If that is true, then I know that these two triangles are indeed congruent, are identical. So triangle ABC in my congruency statement, I have to make sure that I put the letters in the correct order. I know that A corresponds to D, right? I know that side AB corresponds to side DE, so it's DEF. Okay, so let's see what that looks in, like in practice. It says, given that side SQ bisects angle RQT. So let's look over here. SQ, this side, bisects RQT. Bisect, I know that means it divides it into two equal angles, or two angles of equal measurement. So I'm going to add that to my diagram over here. And you should note that when I do so, that's probably something that I'm going to have to add over here to my statements, right? I concluded that, yes, they were these two angles were of equal measure. That's something that I'm going to have to prove. I'm going to have to give a reasoning for in my proof. As a side note, so it bisects angle RQT and it also bisects angle RST, RST. Now be careful here. It bisects both. It divides this angle into two equal parts and this angle into two equal parts. But those parts aren't necessarily of equal measure. So I have to use a double arc here to indicate that these two are identical, but not necessarily congruent to this over here. Okay, so I want to prove that triangle QRS, QRS, is congruent to triangle QTS. Now we're introducing ASA, ASA here, so it's probably what we're going to be using. I have two angles, so I need an included side, a side that connects, that uh, is adjacent to both these angles. So I have an angle, side, angle. This side is what I'm looking for. Now I know that this side is part of both triangles. It is congruent unto itself by the reflexive property, so that's what I'm going to be using. So side SQ bisects RQT and RST, that's given. Angle RQS is congruent to angle TQS. RQS congruent to TQS. Ah, that's what I wrote down over here. That follows from the definition of an angle bisector. So definition of angle bisector, right? And then you have angle RSQ. RSQ is congruent to TSQ. TSQ, again, that follows from the definition of an angle bisector. Okay. QS is congruent unto itself. That is always true by the reflexive property, reflexive property of congruence. Right? And so finally, I want to be able to prove that triangle QRS, QRS, is congruent to triangle QTS. Well, I already solved that when I when I was looking at the diagram, and that's what you need to do. You solve it first, and then you go ahead and complete the proof. And I saw that I could prove using the ASA theorem. So that is my proof over there. Let's go to the next page. We have question number three over here. It says, 
given that angle BAC is congruent to DEC. So BAC congruent to DEC. Right away, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to use my arc. Right? So again, that's something I'm going to add to my statements. Whatever I draw over here, I'm probably going to have to add over here. And so it says um, C is the midpoint of AE. AE, line segment AE, is C is the midpoint. Again, that means that it divides into two equal parts. I know that. So I want to prove that triangle ABC, ABC, is congruent to triangle EDC, EDC. Okay, I know an angle, I know a side, an angle, and a side. If I want to use angle, uh, angle, side, angle, I'm have, going to have to find another angle, right? Angle, side, angle. Well, we know that these are vertical angles over here, so they're going to be congruent as well. So I can see right away how I'm going to prove it. And when I'm putting this together, I always start with what's given. So let's start with what's given. Angle BAC is congruent to angle DEC, right? That's given, right? I was also told that C is the midpoint. C is midpoint of line segment AE. That's also given. And I know what I'm trying to prove, right? I'm trying to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC, right? That goes on the bottom line. And I've already solved it for myself. Angle, side, angle. I know how I'm going to prove it. I'm going to use angle, side, angle. So now I'm just missing two lines in effect, right? So the first line refers to the fact that um, C is the midpoint of AE. And from that follows that AC is congruent to CE. So I'm going to write that down. AC is congruent to C, I'm sorry, EC. And how do I know that? Well, I know that by the definition of midpoint, right? Definition of midpoint. I was told that C is the midpoint. Therefore, these it divides AE into two equal line segments, line segments of equal length. Okay, so let's look at this one over here. The only one I have left is this one over here. I determined that these are vertical angles and therefore congruent. So I can say angle BCA is congruent to angle D, C, E, and I know that because they're vertical angles. Vertical angles. And I'm done with this proof. So let's go to the next theorem that we're going to be using to prove uh, two triangles congruent. It's the AAS theorem. If two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and a non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So let's take a look. We have triangles angle A is congruent to angle D. We have angle B congruent to angle E, but we don't have the side in between anymore. Instead, we have a side on the outside, angle, angle, side. This side congruent to that side. Well, if this is the case, then these two are congruent. It's another way of proving them congruent. So if angle A is congruent to angle D, and I have angle B congruent to angle E, right? And I have line segment BC congruent to line segment EF. All that is true. Then I know that triangle ABC, triangle ABC, is congruent to triangle. And I have to be careful with the order again. So angle A corresponds with angle D. Uh, side AB, side AB over here corresponds with DE. So it's DEF. Okay. So let's go to the next page for our first uh, example uh, of a proof using this, um, this theorem. So we have angle ABC is congruent to CED. A, B, C, C, E, D. So these two angles up here, they're congruent to each other. That's given. Okay. I have AB is parallel to CE. So AB parallel to CE. I have to use an arrow for that. Awesome. I have two parallel lines. That means I can use angle pairs. Okay. If these lines are parallel over here. Just think about it. These lines are parallel. If you can't envision it, you can extend these lines over here a little bit for yourself. Extend them out. They're parallel like that. Right? They keep going. They're lines. They keep going in both directions. This line over here is going to be what we call a transversal. Right? It crosses over the two parallel lines. Okay, so when you have two parallel lines, always look for that transversal. Okay, so then it says C is the midpoint of line segment AD. Line segment AD, C is the midpoint. So I can add my, uh, my tick mark over there to indicate that. 
So again, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to prove that ABC, so ABC is congruent to CED. I have a side, I have an angle, side, an angle. I need something else that's not enough information. Now we're using the, the theorem angle, angle, side, so clearly I'm going to need another angle. So if we look at this angle over here, this is the transversal. These two angles are corresponding angles. Therefore, they also will be congruent. So here I have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, and I'm good to go. Okay, so when I put together my proof, I always start with what's given. So angle A, B, C is congruent to angle C, E, D. That is given. I'm told that line segment A, B is parallel to line segment C, E. All right, that's also given. And I'm told that C is the midpoint of AD. C is the midpoint of AD, right? That's also given. Wow, that's already three lines. I also know what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CED. Uh, and I've already solved it for myself. I know it's by angle, angle, side, the angle, angle, side theorem. So I can write that down as well. And again, I've reduced the proof to two key lines. Well, the first thing that I figured out was that these two uh, line segments must be congruent. And I know that because this is the midpoint. Okay, so I'm going to write down AC is congruent to uh, CD, right? This congruent to that. And how do I know that? Well, that's the definition of midpoint. Definition of midpoint. Now let's see, what was the other information that I used? Oh, yeah, I used the transversal and the fact that these are corresponding angles. So I can say angle BAC, angle BAC is congruent to angle ECD, angle ECD, because they're corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. Right? And that's it. And we're done with that one. Let's see if we have time for one more over here. So we have line segment LG is parallel to JM. LG parallel to JM. Okay, I'm going to put my little arrow there. Awesome. So again, I can extend these in both directions. These are parallel lines like this. When I do so, I see that this guy over here is a transversal, and this is also a transversal. I have two transversals. Okay, H is the midpoint of line segment LM. LM, H is the midpoint, therefore I know it divides it into two equal parts like that. I want to prove that triangle LGH, triangle LGH, is congruent to triangle MJH, MJH. Okay, awesome. So how do I figure that one out? Of course, you want to start by figuring it out first before you go ahead and solve it. I only know one side, right? They didn't tell me anything about the other side, so I'm going to have to use two, I'm going to have to use angles, right? Well, right away, I can see that these are vertical angles, right? So I can write down, okay, these guys over here, they're vertical angles. That's good. But now, what about these angles? Well, we just saw these are parallel. Therefore, these two angles over here are alternate interior angles. So they are also congruent. And now I have angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. And I'm good to go. So let's start with what's given. LG, line segment LG is parallel to line segment GM. That is given. I know H is the midpoint. H is the midpoint of line segment LM, right? That's also given. I know that LH is congruent to MH now. LH is congruent to MH, right? They're congruent to each other because that follows from the definition of the midpoint, right? So LH is congruent to MH. That follows from the definition of the midpoint. Probably should have ended up here first. I'm sorry. We should write down first where we're headed. So we know that these two triangles are congruent. I know that I've already solved it over here. That was AAS. So I should have done that first after I did the given. Okay. So, but okay. So we've got these two line segments are congruent and that falls from the definition of the midpoint. What other information did I use? Um, let me see. I used two different things. I used the fact that these were uh, cars, uh, alternate interior angles, so we can start with that one. So I know that angle G is congruent to angle J because they're alternate interior angles. 
and I also 